All right, guys, I want to put this up because a lot of people had questions about my last video on Cheat Engine. So I'm going to redo the first video first before I carry on doing anything else. Um, for the folks who have the problems right away, you cannot always edit it in the program files folder if you don't have the permissions. Also, from your root folder, your C folder, you won't. You also won't be able to modify there. I like to use the desktop, nice and easy. You put it on there. All we're gonna do is go in. And I'm gonna show you the faster way to do what we did last time. Maybe a little easier for some of you. Um, Control R will bring up your replace. Type in cheat. I'm gonna replace it with NOPT, just an equal number. You don't have to change engine because not all games search for the word engine. You have to search in all directions, up and down the file, because it doesn't always open up at the top, even though this one did. I don't know if my cursor's there. So I'll replace them all. I will Control R, Unicode, replace all. Move right on to the next one. I hate when it does that. I should do them backwards, it'll be easier. Same thing, cheat to not. Um, our text editor for all directions, correct every time. Place, Unicode, done. Same thing with this one. All directions. Unicode. All right. And I'm gonna show you guys also where a little error was last time. A lot of people had, which will save you a lot of problems. And by the way, I, I, oops, cancel. I did figure out that this is a SSE4 is next. Uh, it's a micro Intel microarchitecture instructions. It's still just an instruction set for a processor. So I would go ahead and do this because I don't know what machine you're on and you may very well use that instruction set. All directions. Unicode, done. All right, now a lot of you, when we got here, had a problem. I got this all done. Uh, let me change the names too. Just tabbing through is all I'm doing here. If you make a mistake, alt tab. Doesn't go too far. And I change all three of these. You don't need to change anything else. Like you guys may see, there is a, a locked file here. That's a, that's a signature file. But this here is a back. It's just a, a backup. That's all that is. Once we changed it and we made modifications, it created a backup of itself. Just in case you make a mistake, you could always just delete the back and make this cheat engine your new cheat engine. And it will be the original without your modifications. All right, not. All right, all done. Now you got all this done, and then you launched it, and you're like, oh, man, I don't need to launch this one, but it'll work. Oh, man, there's an error. You know, it gives an error. Okay. The error isn't going to stop your cheat engine from working somewhat. Let's go down to our new NOPT engine. We'll start the main one so it can choose its own which one to launch. Okay, we have a problem. Our says our save session Lua error um, in our folder, cheat engine, auto run session save session Lua on line six and attempt to call a nil value. On the global cheat engine is 64 bit. Uh, of course it doesn't know because <laughs> we changed cheat to NOPT. So when it goes to look for cheat engine is 64 bit, it's not finding it. So we go to our save session. I'm going to edit this with a notepad plus plus. And I do apologize for going fast. I have a date and I am getting out of here. Line six. Not. We changed ours to lowercase, so we'll follow that. Um, you can also do a, you know, a find. And we can look for the word cheat. And it will jump ahead. See this here, this is a comment and a dialogue filter whatever I'm gonna change this too only because I don't want it saying cheat in my program oh guess I gotta look for cheat huh another one I'll get rid of Three forty. We have another one. Remember, it was a capital letter, but you did not choose case sensitive, so it will not be like this. It will be like this, the way you typed it. And ruined your camo type, type, but eh, it'll be all right. And another one on fifty six. 
And is there any more? Oh yeah, find it all. No hits, we're golden. So we close this, we save this. Okay, close it down, close it down, and we'll launch our NOPT engine. And this engine will not be detectable by a string detection. Meaning that if it scans your file for the word cheat engine, it will not find it, which is exactly what we want. And to run a quick test, I have Roblox open. I am not going in that game because I went in there before and I got murdered like 50 times trying to just get started so I can make a simple teleport hack for you guys with Cheat Engine, which is going to be my next video, probably about two days. I am very busy. All right, Cheat Engine's open. There is no crash. It would have already crashed by now, and I'll show you that too. Okay, it's open, it's open, attach, Roblox, attached. Um, values you're going to want to start scanning for is going to, what, who is this? What happened to this body? Huh? I have no idea, that was not what this person was wearing, there it goes, oh man, she looks pregnant, oh man. All right, let's go. All good. Here is everything. Okay, we have it attached. I could search values. There's, there's no reason. You're not going to find your money value if you don't know what it's saved as. It's probably going to be a double or something because this game, your money goes up quite high. Actually, only ah, uh, I've seen people with over a million. So, uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. I wanted to show you that it will crash. with the regular cheat engine. Got to go the right way. And a regular cheat engine. Ta-da. Bam, I got kicked out. All right. And yes, for those of you asking if it'll work in other games, it'll work in most games that scan, scan for a string detection. I used it to write several hacks for Facebook Gamer Room. I, I like writing them in here. They're very easy. Um, you can identify your player code very simply. Like when it's your turn, scan for a 1. When it's your opponent's turn, scan for a 0. And once you find that address, um, find out what writes to it or accesses it and see if there's an offset attached to it. If there is, grab that address with that offset and dissect your data structure. I kind of give you... a a quick idea how that works. I'm not gonna go through and do it because this video needs to be short. All right. You would do go into a regular game, and I'll tell you a little trick for this. When you're playing this game, you go to processes on the tab, and you count. There will be three Facebook Gamer Room browsers with the EXE. There should be three. One, two, or one, two, three. This one doesn't have the browser. It'll be the second one every time. Can actually show you how to write a Lua script to detect which one it is and attach for you. But we'll, we'll do that later. I gotta make quick, quick, quick. All right, you go through and you would do your scan, like, oh, it's my turn. You'll scan for one. And then you do, oh, it's the next person's turn. Scan for zero. You would get this really quickly weeded down. It's best to have a friend so that we can drag out the game to like five or six shots. It'll make it way faster. Or in any game you're doing, this one here, just some games can end in two or three shots. Not cool and you have to start over trying to scan and find your addresses. Once you find it, um, let me just grab any address, I'll scan a number, and we'll go in and you would dissect this. Or actually, first you want to browse this memory region. Make sure you're at the right address. I'm not going to use the jump because I don't really care, and I'm going to actually disassemble this memory region. And then I go up here to tools and you will go to dissect data structure and then you would take that address that you had, you see it put it in there for me, structure, define a new structure. And I guess field types is fine. The size you might need to turn it up, most likely not. I mean, that's a, a lot of space. And you'll see that that address is right here, but you'll also notice that if this is your player address, if you had just found, and you may have an offset in here, it might be minus, I don't know, let's say C4, you know? 
and that'll actually subtract C4, which in, if you use your calculator, you can figure out what that is. Um, C4 converted over to, to numbers, but it takes, takes you back that many in the field. Uh, let's say if you wanted to go back just eight bits, you could actually just do minus eight. And it'll actually take you back eight bits from C8, which is C0, giving you another number. And, and from here, you, you'll be in your player structure, and each one of these, you'll be able to do stuff in the game, like, and for instance, moving around, I'm um, doing this. Oh, this number starts changing. You know, oh, that's probably my coordinates. Oh, this one says 370, and I have 370 gold. That's probably my gold. And all of this stuff will be saved in your player. You don't, they don't put data just randomly anywhere in the program because it's object-oriented programming. So normally you have an entire object that is a player, and within that player you have a bunch of values, such as health and um, all these stats. And, well, if you just find the address to that structure, then they populate by themselves. You don't have to go and find each individual value. You just come through and start, you know, making your changes, and <laughs> and you'll be able to tell which one's which by the stats of your stuff. And you'll be able to change your club stats. In this game, you can modify a lot. Uh, now, remember, you're not going to be changing any server-sided values. That's just not going to happen. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and cut this short, and I will make my next video on showing you guys how to use this to make something useful. I don't need to save you. Alright, y'all have a good time and I hope it helped clear up some of the information. If you have any more questions, go ahead and drop them down there and I'll try to get back to you. Alright, thanks.